See smooth and all's well. Next stop, Rhodes. Another part of the hive, and here the bees are always buzzing. A birthday message to London will be there in a few hours. And here's our respected Doc, busy in the surgery. He's not overworked, I believe, but after all, there are 1,500 of us, and it's comforting to know he's there. What's he inspecting? Don't ask me. And it's my turn for inspecting, Captain's Rounds. I don't inspect all the ship every day, but everyone is ready in case I do. Air conditioning? At sea? In tropical waters, you appreciate cool cabins and dining rooms. Here's the Aronce Telephone Exchange, as busy as city or central. A big help in a big ship, and it saves the passengers many a long walk. The laundry's under pressure, too. I believe they handle something like 5,000 pieces a day. We like to see our passengers looking as spick and span as the crew. There's a bank aboard as well. Cashing a check at the purse's office. Someone's going ashore, or perhaps it's a bridge debt. Can't stop the ladies shopping, even at sea. This is the ship's Bond Street, where you can get almost everything from books to brass trays, from sun hats to shaving cream. Here, if you liked, you could get your souvenirs of a dozen countries without ever going ashore. Cheaper, probably, too, and no foreign money trouble. to anchor into the harbor of Rhodes. Mountainous, fertile, it enjoys, they say in the guidebook, the most beautiful climate in the Mediterranean. Here was one of the seven wonders of the world, the Colossus of Rhodes, an enormous statue in bronze 112 feet high. But it was thrown down by an earthquake for which, no doubt, the purser will be blamed. Another favorite port of call when we go cruising is Istanbul, the ancient capital of the Turkish Empire. I can't get out of the habit of calling it Constantinople. A city built like Rome on seven hills. Europe and Asia join hands across the narrow waters at Istanbul, the gateway of the east. ship in the midst of the sea. Here comes our respected elder sister, Orcades. It's always a bit of an event when two ships of the same line meet in mid-ocean, and we like to make a little show of it. So do the crew. We all belong to the same great line. We've all been shipmates with someone over there. And the two fine ships are truly sisters. It's like looking at yourself in a great blue glass.
the swimming pool. In sunny seas, the social center of the ship. From dawn till dusk, and sometimes after dark, it is a haunt of bliss, the rendezvous of youth and beauty. The one complaint here is that the pool is often overpopulated. But for this, not even the purser can be blamed. across the smooth Mediterranean, lingering in ports and cities, vivid with color, mellow with history. Athens with its Acropolis. The Parthenon, perfect monument of ancient art. The glory that was Greece. bound, the ship drops anchor in the Bay of Naples, within the shadow of Vesuvius. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the volcano erupted and buried the famous Roman city of Pompeii. But a century ago, its wonders were unearthed, and the people of the 20th century can stroll among the temples and the houses of the ancient Romans. Naples itself is picturesque, but no beauty spot, though it's so beautifully situated. Better to wander south across the bay, where within sight of the ship lies the sunny paradise of Sorrento, Italy at its most romantic. The ship scents the stable. The passengers feel they've known each other all their lives. They have steamed 5,000 miles together. They have been to fair coasts and lovely islands and peeped at many centuries. And now, there is a sound of revelry by night and Hampstead Heath invades the Mediterranean. The last nights of warm air and blue water receive the traditional salute of fancy dress and general folly. It's high life on the ocean way. a ship in the midst of the sea. A lovely ship. The world must own our worth while we can send such beauty round the earth. 